How do I start? You're like, hi everyone. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Welcome back to the Minute Women Podcast. My name is Grace. And I say I'm Linnea. And I'm Linnea. And I'm Linnea. I literally was Every like, time. what do I say? <laughs> you smell burnt toast. Doctor, I smell burnt toast. I dragged my ass out of bed for this picture. <laughs> On Mondays, it's going to be Margarita Mondays. <laughs> Nationwide. <laughs> and feel that reciprocated enjoyment. enjoyment. Oh my god! It's like we're friends or something. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Minute Women Podcast. My name is Grace. And I'm Linnea. And we're doing a belated birthday party. Yeah, we're <laughs> having a little party here in Grace's kitchen. I need, I need like banners and kazoos and balloons. Envision that. Envision that. And that's what's happening. Yeah. On this beautiful snowy Sunday morning. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, And so we decided that we wanted to do something a little fun because we've told like we've told bits and pieces of our origin story. Um, yeah. We've kind of gotten into it a little bit. Yeah. I think like people like know our origin story a fair bit, but I think <laughs> what and maybe you'll disagree. Okay. But what I have noticed over the last couple of months is when we tell people our origin story, they're like, oh, you guys barely knew each other when you started this podcast? That's insane. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, I guess you're right. Yeah. Like, so <laughs> that's a terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> like, so I guess if you haven't, if you didn't know, the the very short version of it is like, Linnea knew someone who was in podcasting and he wanted to start a history podcast and she knew me through curling. And so she told me about it, but I didn't know who this person was. So I was like, I'll only do it if you want to do it with me. Yeah. And at this point in time, Linnea and I didn't hang out outside of curling together once a week, really. No. But Linnea was generous enough to be like, yeah, sure, I guess. <laughs> okay. A blind leap of faith on both our parts to just kind of start this no. history podcast and so once we kind of decided we were going to we wound up hanging out more yeah and so by the time the first episode was recorded i'd say we had actually been hanging out outside of curling for maybe like two months yeah so we'd yeah. known this each other. This is also pre-pandemic. Pre-pandemic, this is, we yeah. did, Like, if you had told us at this point that there was going to be a global pandemic, we would have laughed in your faces. Yeah. We would have said, not here. Not in Nova Scotia. We're safe. <laughs> to me? Yeah. No. To, to us, no. To us, never. But yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's so... in. And when you say it out loud... Yeah, it's bizarre. It does sound really bizarre. Yeah. But I do look back at that time and... I I was in the second year of my master's, so I didn't have any classes anymore. I was just writing my thesis. I think I was really lonely. Yeah. <laughs> and not to say, like, anyone will do, but no. sort of, like, like, I just need a friend. And I completely, I completely agree. Like, I mean, I was in a relationship that wasn't really going super well, that mm. I wasn't really talking about, and to have something else to focus on and kind of be involved in. And I was between jobs. Funding had ran out for my previous not-for-profit position. I was waitressing. Yeah. And I just really needed something to look forward to. And, yeah. And, like, a friend to, like, do that with. And so it worked out really well. Yeah, and I think it was just, like... Like really exciting to like be doing something that was purely for fun take Again, chances just taking chances just, yeah just, swinging for the fences just hoping it all works out okay yeah and now that was two years That's ago crazy. but like more than two years because we had been planning and recording yeah. since maybe like december yeah and then it released at the end of february so yeah. it's really been more than two years for us anyways yeah. and it's so crazy how much the world has changed mm -hmm. in the last two years and our lives have changed and yeah 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 but it's also like it's been more than two years but it's also one of these like this is one of those friendships where like i don't there's like time before grace and like time after grace like it's like <laughs> yeah no, like for there's sure. not yeah like it's not it's not a it's not like just a blip in like my life of like relationships of like doing a project together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And also because it lined up so closely with the beginning of pandemic. Yeah. Pandemic times. <laughs> um it's like 
it is funny though because like I think lockdown for- washing groceries times like yeah. it was like yes. hardcore <laughs> yes and then not seeing each other for like four months and then you went to Cape Breton for the summer and then I went to Cape Breton for the summer so I was like even though lockdown had kind of eased I still wasn't living in Halifax nor were you I think right nope. or no you were living at my oh, I place was. I was I was living at your place <sighs> so wild because yeah Linnea took over my apartment for a period of time yeah and just was like staying at my place but yeah, we would only see each other like every couple of weeks, maybe. Yeah. And throughout lockdown, I think we were both living at our parents' place. Yeah. It was just like my whole life revolved around this one actual weekly commitment I yeah. had. Everything else could have been like postponed. Like everything had become so long term focused, yeah. which knowing myself, that's really bad. Because I am someone who, like, will really overthink everything. And, like, if if things are all pushed out to the long term, yeah. I get very existential. Okay. <laughs> I literally am like, and then I'll die someday. Yeah. And yeah. that's bad. I can so see that. I, I need you. things to be really short term <laughs> in focus. She just needs to know. Yeah, I just need to know. And so if it's, like, that, like, short term thing, like, got me through the pandemic more than anything else yeah it was my well because i was living at home with my parents and my little sister who's 12 now and it was my one piece of like privacy like it was my one piece of solitude like i just got to lock myself in a room and like not be like just trapped in a house yeah no my that period of my life is defined as Writing my master's thesis in my bedroom, doing the podcast, Animal Crossing on the Switch, yep. and watching Twin Peaks with my youngest brother. Uh, you got that, into Animal Crossing during the pandemic. That was my, like, four months of lockdown, basically. Uh, I remember coming back from lockdown and being back in Halifax, both of us, and I remember you, like, talking about how you had to get Colm to, like, wake up or, like, Aiden to, like, buy crops on Animal Crossing. Yeah, and this was like a legitimate. <laughs> it was a real problem in my life because like I didn't have a whole lot else going on. So, and I was like, <laughs> and I must say, I wasn't very good at Animal Crossing. My my island was like a third world country compared to other people's <laughs> islands. I wasn't very good at it. You were so, so cute, cute though. It's so cute. It's so cute. <laughs> it's been so long since I looked at it, and it keeps track of time. So if I go back now, it'll be like, where have you been, Grace? <laughs> You've abandoned us, Lida. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry cats and dogs on this island <laughs> and bunnies my my sincerest apologies to the people of my island that i can't remember the name of <laughs> i'm so sorry anyways but yeah it's uh, it's yeah it's been it's a wild really ride hard to like yeah it's been, it's a, been very a wild, wild ride. ride yeah we've done some live shows we have a merch store we uh we left one studio joined another joined another now we're in my kitchen most of the time what do you think has like been the biggest lesson of doing the podcast for you? Oh. Cuz there's a lot of like practical things I've learned. Yeah. Like I've learned how to edit audio. Yeah. But I think also I've just learned like if you love it, it'll be good. Yeah. Like the episodes I go back and I'm like I hated writing and it was like really nervous to record. But then the minute you like sit down and yeah. you're just like having a good time, yeah. it doesn't matter really. No, it's true. And I almost feel, and it's not a lesson I've learned, but every episode that you've come in and you've been like, like, it doesn't have a lot of content. Like, I don't really like it. Like, da 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 da. (laughs) Those are the episodes where I'm like, okay, this is my role. Like, I now will make this the most fun, hilarious, interesting, long winded episode. And I'm like, so that's, so I like that challenge, like being able to have that kind of like, um, being able to kind of bring that uh to the show also like yeah if you build it they will come like yeah we yeah we built this thing we built this little baby that's two now (laughs) and uh and the people have come and they are here yeah i think like as long as you love it and like want to keep doing it yeah it is worth doing i guess it can be really easy to get caught up in numbers and be like disappointed with like how many people listen to something or whatever but like at no point do i look at that and think it's not worth doing anymore yeah i guess i see it more as a challenge to try and like try new things if anything but at the end of the day it's like i do think i do this for you and you do this for me and like 
that's ultimately the only you're the only person I feel obliged to do this for in any way. Not that yeah. I feel obliged. No, no, no. But I, I completely agree with my that. My commitment is to you and no one else. Yeah. 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 You're my podcast wife. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this podcast marriage. <laughs> yeah. It is. It is a marriage. Uh co parenting. Co parenting, yeah. Um but talking about how outrageous it is that we just kind of decided to do this um there was really no formal like interview process no no (laughs) uh we never kind of sat down and you know had that discussion of if we'd be good fits like with each other um there was no matchmaking there was no matchmaking (laughs) just uh just slamming it together um just a car crash if you will (laughs) A podcast car crash. <laughs> um, but we made it out on the scathe. And now, um, for all of you, our fans, the people who have come the people to who listen come. to the podcast, <laughs> uh, we wanted to do some interview questions for each other. Yeah, so we figured, like, after two years, maybe it'd be a good time to do, like, a formal interview yeah. for each other. So we're going to interview each other, and we've come up with some questions yeah. that we feel are good um, test the water questions yeah. for whether or not we would be good co-hosts. Exactly. We also wrote these questions in the same room as each other. <laughs> Just laughing at across the yeah. room. <laughs> yeah. How many questions do you have? I have three. Oh. Oh, you have a lot? How oh, many yeah. do you have? Shit, sorry. I've dropped Don't the be ball. sorry. I have nine. No. <laughs> Can you answer them as well? Yeah. Okay, cool. Oh, you, like, for sure. Think, like, I'll go through my questions and then we'll go through your questions yeah. and we can both answer them. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay, cool. Okay. And I feel like there might be some like doubled up information. Yeah. One okay. of my questions is like, what's your name? Like, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I was doing it as like a formal interview process. Like, what's your name? Grace McNutt. Oh, pff, no. State your name for the record is actually what it says. Your full name. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mine are more like situational questions okay. like that I think you would get asked at like a Google interview because they're like everyone's a Picasso. Everybody like <laughs> is a genius. Yeah. So we need to you know pair it back a okay. little bit. We need to get the vibes. Okay. So this is my questions are vibe checks. Hit me with it. <laughs> you are lost in the woods with okay. no food or shelter. Okay. You can take one Heritage Minute hero with you. Okay. Do you take a... Oh. Grey Owl, a.k.a. Archie Bellini. Okay. B, Mona Parsons. C, Maurice Richard. D, Dr. Penfield. Can this be like a fuck, Mary kill scenario? Because <laughs> no. that's easier to answer with those characters. You can walk um, through your thought process, okay. but I want to I wanna know okay. who your choice um, is. Just repeat the first part. I'm in the woods where? Does it say where? You are lost in the woods with no food or shelter. Okay. There's no uh, temporal zone. Right. Okay. No food or shelter, <laughs> lost in the woods. So let's start with Grey Owl. Okay. Grey Owl, in the nicest terms, is a fake it till you make it kind of guy. Yeah. So I feel like if I was lost in the woods with Grey Owl, he'd be like, we're going to be fine. I know exactly where we're going. And then we just end up like way more lost. Like yeah. he, he would be like. I've... Also an alcoholic. Yeah. So... He'd be like, I've got this. Trust me. <laughs> um, yeah. Like we're going to follow. Like, yeah. We're going to follow these animal tracks when he literally has no idea. Yeah. Um, so I don't think that would be a good option. I think maybe at the time that Grail was kind of coming to fame, maybe people mm. would have thought that that would have been a good idea. Mm. But knowing what I know now about Archie Bellini Baloney Man. Um, Archie Baloney. <laughs> how have we never made that joke before? He's full of baloney. Oh, my God. <laughs> Archie Baloney. Um, That's hilarious. Yeah. I don't think I'd pick him. As as beautiful as Penfield is, um, <laughs> he's not. He's not. He doesn't really read to me as an in the woods type guy. Yeah, he needs a sterile room. Exactly. To operate. Exactly. Yeah. Or football field. And or this is neither field. of yeah. those things. Mm-hmm. I think honestly, and not in like a sexist way at all. But I think I would pick the rocket. I just feel really. Like, I feel like he's very kind of in everything I've watched about him and doing the minute that we read. Like he's kind of paternal. Mm. And okay. I feel like that bilingual. Yeah, you never know. If what we kind run of into like, bilingual wolves, you'll meet just in the say woods. Like a French squirrel, like I wouldn't be able to communicate, but he'll like know what to say. No, but yeah, <laughs> I just feel like there's a bit of that, like yeah, paternal instinct that would. And he just seems like he's like a salt of the earth kind of like grew up, yeah, like carrying couches type of guy. <laughs> Um, and so I feel like, I feel like he would, 
have like the sensibility to like get us out of that situation. Him or Mona though. Yeah. It's definitely it's definitely not Penfield and uh Penfield and Grey Owl. Mona also I feel like would be much more enjoyable to talk to. Like if yeah. if we were gonna if it was gonna be the end for me, like because we're trapped <laughs> in the woods, at least like ending it with Mona would be like would be like I a good time. You're planning for your death, <laughs> not your survival. You're like, you know, if I'm gonna die, <laughs> like you've already resided to the fact that this is the I'm end. I'm lost in the woods. <laughs> I'm not getting us out of there. <laughs> like, yeah, I think I would have chosen Mona. Yeah, because she has demonstrated her ability to run. She like got away from a prison yeah. and she made her way to Holland, yeah. surviving in the fields. It's you know? true. And she's not an alcoholic. Like, I think Grey Owl is she's like not an alcoholic. You know, key from the surface seems like the guy because he has woodsman experience. It's not him, but he's just he's a loose cannon. He is. Loose cannon. I don't know if I can trust him. He and is. Penfield's like, yes, obviously the most attractive choice. But, yeah. you know, like, I don't need brain surgery. I need clean water. Yeah. Can you get me clean water? I don't think so. I don't think he can. So my second question. Okay. A grouchy old man leaves a boomer comment on your podcast. Mm. <laughs> Do you, A, laugh it off with your co-host and move on? B, hold a grudge and bring it up at every possible moment. <laughs> C, both. <laughs> both. <laughs> I was like, just kidding. I was like, is there an all of the above? Because it's all of the above. It's all of the above. I don't even need to hear all the answers. It's all of the above. (laughs) I just think about that. I was like, we've really only ever had one mean comment left on our podcast. And we talk about it all the time. And we never let you all forget it. (laughs) We will never let you forget it. We have haters. Yeah. (laughs) We made it because we have haters. I uh, recently published an article that oh, has been read by a lot of people, and it's I'm such very... a great article. Thank you, but I it has received a variety of uh, comments just because anything that gets any kind of coverage gets mm-hmm. comments, right? And Eric was saying to me, I was saying like, I can't believe this person would say this. They clearly didn't even like read the article. Blah 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 blah, and he's just like, Grace, it's okay. These people are dumb. Like. You don't have haters or whatever. I'm like, no, Eric, I want haters. Yeah, shut like, up, Eric. No, no, no. I like, I like complaining about it. I'm thriving on it. this. I am feeding on this right now. I love the drama. And he's just like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, like, not Eric's mentality. Like, okay. <laughs> is he trying to be a good boyfriend, convince you, and you're like, no. Like, like, let me revel in this. I mean, yes, I want, like, your, like, pity, but also I want – to the drama. I'm still going to talk about it. I'm still going like, to talk about it. Like, you can feel, you can, like, tell me that I'm great, but I'm also going to keep talking about it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, definitely all of the above on that one. Okay. And my last question is more of, like, just, like, a, a, a serious question, I guess. But, like, okay. so you're starting a podcast. What is your goal in starting it? Like, what do you hope to get out of hosting a podcast? Oh. To be completely honest, and I don't think I've ever, like, like divulged women first. this before. I could have been first. Um, Really, like we were kind of talking about just a few minutes ago, what I wanted to go to the podcast is I was just like super stoked to be like gaining a new friend and doing something like cool. And so I was just like super pumped about that. I was like, she's so cool. She'll be my friend now. So cool. She's trapped. (laughs) You're hired. (laughs) She's trapped. Yeah. Under my spell. Yeah, basically. Um, But yeah, in a more serious like note, I mean, we kind of talked about that. We just wanted like one person to be able to listen to the show and like it. I uh, I genuinely didn't think a lot of people were going to listen. And like the fact that it has like, I don't know if it's, you know, like grown exponentially. Like I don't really look into it that much, but it's it is it has like maintained listenership yeah. and that's like such a huge accomplishment on our part i think yeah because the other thing that I, and we've talked about this with uh sarah mcclellan in the past when mm-hmm. she's come on the podcast but it's not our job it's free content yeah. we don't get paid to really do any of this and so because i think people listen to it and they think well it's like it's their job to like yeah. It's like, it's really not. I said this to someone the other day, like someone who knows me. I I was like, yeah, I actually just like left my job at the LCLC and they were like, to be a podcaster full time. And I was like, <laughs> no, no, nowhere near that. <laughs> no, for another job. Like, <laughs> like a real human. Yeah. Yeah. And they were like, oh, but like, and I was like, no, it's not like that. 
It's really not like thank, that. Thank you, but... Yeah, like, yeah. obviously, it's it's very flattering. Yeah, but thank you for thinking that. But... The life of podcasting is not glamorous. It's not glamorous. <laughs> it's... It, never has been i think like for i will forever remember duct taping microphones to wine bottles Mm -hmm. so we could like have Mm -hmm. something to prop them up on yeah and even though barely have professional equipment well even though now we have like fairly professional mics mine is balanced on a candle and yours is on a diffuser yeah so they can be yeah like a a humidifier humidifier, sort of a mini humidifier a mini humidifier uh so they can be at like the right level yeah the right level (laughs) yeah We've come so far. No more um, duct tape, though. The next purchase, though, we should get mic arms. Yes. That would be cool as hell. That would be, and put them on this table. Eric yeah. will be, like, trying to make bread, and he'll just be getting whipped with, like, mics. <laughs> Simultaneously. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but what are your questions? Uh, I want okay. To okay, so I love the interview process. How many people have you interviewed, out of curiosity? Like, for jobs. I've been on the, like, interviewing side of the table. Like, I've been asking the questions for at least four positions with, like, Whoa. multiple candidates. Wow. Yeah. yeah that's a lot. Yeah. So, I mean, like, I've done the I've done the question thing before. Um, and I've also interviewed for, for many jobs. Many jobs. <laughs> We're happy with this. And this is a good one. <laughs> um, yeah. So, my first one was I just said, you know, please state your full name for the record. My name is Brianna Grace McNutt. There we go. What do you think qualifies you for the role of podcast co-creator and co-host of the Mint Woman podcast? Honestly, nothing, but um, <laughs> a more serious Perfect. tone. You know, I, I at the time when we started, I was a master's student, yeah. but now I'm doing my PhD in history, so She's I feel smart. like I can like use that. I've worked in public history, so I've presented history to, yeah. you know, just the general Joe, Jane on the street. I know what they want out of a <laughs> I know what the people want. I know what the people want. I, I've got, you know, my feelers out in the public and I know what the the average history enthusiast wants. Right. From from their history. Oh, it's perfect. So this is kind of like your Woods question. Okay. So what five and we've kind of discussed this previously. Um, so what five heritage men and historical figures would you invite to a dinner? Oh, okay. Well Mona Parsons. Yeah. For sure. Wilford Penfield, of course. Of course. Of course. Ah, oh, so five, five for dinner. For dinner. I think Oscar Peterson, now that he has a heritage Definitely. minute, because I feel like he has great stories. Yeah. And when things like break down for the night and we go to like have a glass of wine or whatever, he'd be like, Where's the piano? And he'd be like, I'm what is it, four four hand the eight the eight arm man or the four arm band? Something, or something like, like that. that. <laughs> You'd just be like, I oh, love- I'm just going to pull out my other arm and play this piano for you. I also love the idea of the forearm man of just being like, yeah, he has forearms. Like, forearm. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I have forearms too. It's like, no, not like that. <laughs> but like, like that. Um, so we've got Mona, we've got Penfield, we've got Oscar. Yeah. That's like a little crew. That's like, yeah, I think that's, that's a great start at the very yeah. least. Who else? I feel like there's a lot of people I wouldn't invite. Okay. Now having done the podcast. Well, let's start. So let's go with these three. Okay. So let's go okay. with these three and then we'll do the part two. So what okay. would each of them bring? Oh. Well, I'd hope Oscar would bring like a piano, but that's a lot to that's ask. A lot. Like a baby grand. He just like rolls in. He's like, oh. A keytar. Where can I back up? Yeah. It's like <laughs> beep, beep, beep. Like, <laughs> it's like, where can I put my piano? I think Wilfred brings. So are, are these things like. To, to 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 feed us to, for to the, like for, to eat, drink and yeah eat? to okay. drink and eat i mean but like oscar bringing a piano sounds pretty legitimate i feel like that's what he'd think you bring to the <laughs> that's just what he'd assume he'd be like this is all i know <laughs> <laughs> i think mona would bring some i'm trying to think of like a dutch food yeah like what's a dutch food staple since she lived in holland for such a long period of time like, I feel like she would bring a Nova Scotia tea situation, mm-hmm. but also bring, like, some, like, French wine yeah. and, like, some... Like some, a bread or something. Yeah, like, some something from the Netherlands, because, yeah. you know, she's, like, she's a hometown girl. She, like, sure. loves Nova Scotia, but at the same time, like, yeah, I lived for, like, decades in Europe. What about Big it? Big part of her life. Yeah. And what about Penfield? What's he bring? I think Penfield brings, like, tailgate stuff. Like, yeah. Because he's just like, you know, 
I know I know what the boys want. Some Ben's white buns and like a pack of hamburgers. Yeah, and some just some light beer. Yeah. Like, let's go. And yeah. I think that it's like a great time. He's like, let's fucking go. That's a good crew. Yeah. I like that. That's a good one. <laughs> Who would you bring? Would you add anybody to the guest list? Okay, so yeah, let's start. I'll, I'll, so I'll bring mine to the guest list. So if you have those three, okay. which are three excellent choices. Thank you. Um, I would invite Vince Coleman. Oh, okay. Fun. Yeah, I think he'd, you know, I, I think he deserves to get out. <laughs> he just needs to get out. <laughs> and then at the end of the night, he would be like, he would make the announcement. Exactly. He's like, it's, we gotta go. We gotta. Everybody leave. Everybody's gotta go. <laughs> get out of here. The minute you're too tired to keep hosting, he acknowledges he that. Agno- <laughs> he acknowledges. <laughs> acknowledge. Um, and I think that he would bring probably just like, like maybe scalloped potatoes or something. Like oh, Just great. like a staple. Like he's a Nova yeah. Scotia boy. Like he's just like, what's hardy that I know how to make? Like, yeah. <laughs> something like that. And... Oh, La Bull Duck. Oh, yeah. Because she and Oscar one. would like oh, be rowdy. They'd absolutely. be fun. Um, they'd be a good crew. And she would definitely bring like wine. She wine. would bring booze. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be like, oh, I found this uh, boxed wine. <laughs> Did you know it comes in boxes? Did you know? <laughs> um, so maybe bo- some like pastries. Yeah. Something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, maybe Viola Desmond. Oh, okay. I feel like she and Mona. Would be able to like bond. Yeah. It is interesting. They would have been like. Yeah. Kind of the same age. Well, and I feel like and she and and Peterson would be able to like talk about like kind of the struggle that they've been through. <laughs> You're just trying to bring people together. I'm just trying to bring people together. Yeah. I just want people to feel <laughs> you want people to at network. I do. I really want networking <laughs> um, to happen. Yeah. No, I think I think that's my three. And Viola would not bring food. She would bring she would know that the other ladies were coming and so she would bring like some beauty product samples and oh, she yeah. would bring like some hair stuff and she would have like la bulldog like quaffed like <laughs> um mona would be like oh, just something yeah. simple and viola would give her like it would really become like a sleepover type. vibes pretty it, quick and penfield would be so into that he'd be like slumber party love it let's let's shotgun <laughs> um yeah, I think that's I think that would be mine. I think that's a fun crew. Okay, now I have um more interview question, but related okay. to Heritage Minutes. This is problem solving. How much do you charge to wash every window of the Chateau Franck? Oh my gosh. Mm. So, is this the real the actual No, it's just like it's just like how like, yeah, you know, how would I work it out? How would you, how would you like work it out? Like what do you think? What do you think's a good like how would you go about that? I mean, so you're probably going to have to do like a per window charge. So this is actually a Google question. And they ask you how much you would charge to wash the windows in the Empire State Building. Oh, okay. I see. Um, Can I look up how many windows are in the Chateau Front I just guess. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm guessing there's probably, like, I don't even know how many floors there are in the Chateau Front Neck. Mm-hmm. It's probably like 20 floors, right? Yeah. Ish. I think so. Okay. Like 20 floors. And let's say we're doing like, I, 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 w- I want to say either $2 a window or $5 a window, okay. Okay. but I'm not sure which of those, if one is really low balling and one's like overstating, yeah. let's say five, we'll just do five. Okay. And then I would guess maybe there is 50 to 100 windows on each floor. Mm-hmm. So we'll go with 75. So 75 times 20. You can use this is not letter. a math podcast. <laughs> yeah. You should be real problem solving skills. <laughs> 75 times 20 is 1,500 windows times $5 a window is $7,500. That feels like a big low ball in terms of how much that's going to cost. So maybe I would up that to like $10 a window. Okay. So like $15,000. That sounds that that sounds right. Maybe that sounds right. Fifteen thousand dollars Canadian. I think you would have gotten the job at Google. You think so? I think so. That was very detailed. That was very well thought out. <laughs> you really showed your uh, your quick solution to thinking. Thank you. Okay, I have two questions left. Okay, and these are completely situational and personal, <laughs> and decisions you may have or may have not already made. So. <laughs> Your co-host comes to you and tells you she plans to let her mother dye her hair red today. (laughs) You know that this is a terrible idea, but she seems excited. How do you coax your co-host off the edge and convince her to leave her hair just as it is? 
Okay. Well, first I would ask, like, what kind of red are we talking? Okay. Like, what's what's the vision? Okay. And then, you know, if it's, if we're, are we on Anna Green Gables or are we like, you know, Rihanna during her candy apple red phase? Like, what kind of red are we going for? I think the best way to get people to evaluate their situation <laughs> is just to like ask them a lot of questions <laughs> and like just be like, so co host, I know you previously dyed your hair really, really dark. Did, did you like that? <laughs> Were you like, did you really like that? You know, like the the last time you cut your hair really short, you didn't like it very <laughs> you much. Didn't like that. Did you like it though? Like, so what do you think now? Like, what are you gonna do different? Because <laughs> <laughs> it's ultimately the goal is to get them to verbalize the opinion that I don't think I want to die right. Here. That, I think it's always a negative approach in a serious like way to just like tell people your opinion yeah It'd be like that's a shit idea yeah. i think there's a there's a nice way to be like stating your opinion while acknowledging that it doesn't really matter to you like it doesn't affect me what some my hypothetical co-host is looking to do you know that's excellent yeah that's that's the perfect answer. Okay, good. That's exactly what that's I'll good. need someday. Did I do? That Are you going to dye your hair red? No, <laughs> but maybe. Who knows? Who knows? Um. Okay. <clears throat> and the final question. Are you ready? I, I've got a feeling it's going to make me go, <laughs> A girl you curl with but aren't really friends with texts you and says, at the curling club and really, attra- really attractive <laughs> Scottish curlers, already drunk, need backup. How do you respond? <laughs> is that the actual text? I don't I don't know. I didn't actually look up the actual text. My answer is like, I'll be there in 15. Yep. Yeah. And that was the right answer. The real scenario is I was actually on the road when you, you were driving. Like that, uh, so I like was in the car with other people too. And I was like, we should all go. Oh. And they were like, nah, I'm tired. And I'm like, I'm going to go. <laughs> like, go? I don't need backup to be backup. Yeah. I'm just going to go be backup. Yeah. And I was. And it was great. And then those curlers went on to win a silver Olympic medal. Yeah. Because of us. Definitely. It's such a weird, like, crossing of, of wires. It is. It's like that team went on to do very public things. And we went on to have a sem- somewhat successful podcast. Yeah. <laughs> It's true. On the same level. It's true. In my opinion. <laughs> they uh they just got a letter from the Queen. Yeah. And uh we had one We have some Twitter angry questions. Fan mail. We have one angry fan <laughs> mail. And we have Twitter questions. And we have some Twitter questions. Answer. Okay. Okay. I feel like we made the right decision. I feel like what these questions have taught me is that we made the right decision. We picked the right co-host. Yeah, absolutely. So we've received a couple of Twitter questions because we asked, like, hey, we're turning two. Send us your questions. Phenomenal. First question is, what happens when you run out of heritage minutes? Which is something we have talked about. Though, I will say, we are very far from that terminus. Yeah. Especially Um, with we've introduced the high gam, some other... Yeah, and like two-parters, revisiting episodes. But hypothetically, I guess, if we ever did run out of heritage minutes, as long as we kept wanting to do the podcast, I think we would just change focus. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if we would truly end Minute Women and start right. a new podcast, but right. I think we would always exist in some form. Yeah, and I mean, seasons and series of podcasts and shows and things, like, end, and then it's, like, what you do after that. Like, I think that's a very – I mean, there is an infinite amount of episodes. Yeah, yeah. So. Next question. Any progress on getting Pierce Brosnan on the show? Are any other guests planned? Well, I actually just was talking to – a player on the Canadian National Paralympic Hockey Team. Mm. Um, so I, I've mentioned in a previous episode, I, I met the Paralympic hobby, Hockey Team and got to work with them when they were in Bridgewater doing a training camp with South Korea. And this player is Adam Dixon, and he <laughs> listens to our podcast, and he really <laughs> likes it. Uh, and he, maybe I'm making that up. Maybe he doesn't really like it, but uh, I think he does. And... He actually had a very similar cancer to Terry Fox and was inspired by that. And so really enjoyed our Terry Fox episode. And I've asked Adam if he'd like to come on the show at some point and kind of have a yeah. discussion about that. So so we've progressed there. We're working on yeah. guests and stuff. Guest coordination is so difficult. Oh, it is. I will say, though, like to all the podcasts that run on a weekly basis mm-hmm. with a guest. Yeah. 
that is so much stress. It's crazy. I don't <laughs> I'm very know. grateful that we get to just pick and choose when we yeah, want to have a Yeah, and I don't know how Sarah does it. Um, yeah. our, our friend Sarah from Intoxicated Podcast. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, one more thing, though, on Paralympics. The Paralympics are um, starting this week. Oh, yeah. um, And so wherever you were watching your Olympics content, you'll be able to watch Paralympic content. And there are many, many Canadian athletes in all forms of sports and different categories in the Paralympics. And, uh, yeah, the men's hockey team is pretty cool, so check them out. <laughs> and in terms of Pierce Brosnan, uh, no formal progress yet, mm. but we're still looking at it. Yeah. <laughs> and the last question, how has doing this podcast changed your perspective slash worldview? I think overwhelmingly, like, I don't know if it's a massive change in perspective, but mm. I do think it's, like, the vast majority of people, like, want you to succeed. Yeah. I don't think people want to see people fail as much as we kind of write that narrative in our head and want haters and all of that yeah. like i think people have like been so overwhelmingly positive and yeah and there are moments where i'm like it's sort of like I- embarrassing to bring up like yeah yeah i do a podcast and it you can is. go listen to me talk for you know 80 hours of content basically so, especially like I'm I'm currently in like the dating field and yes. it's like people ask you something and it's happened in interviews too. Like my last interview for Special Olympics, they were like, you know, they ask all these questions as we just did for an interview. <laughs> and then they're like, is there like anything else that you do that you'd like us to know about? Right. And I'm like, would I like you to know? Like, yeah. Like, what is this like anything do I else I do? You? Yes. Like anything I want to tell you. About? And I, I do usually say because I feel like, you know, being on a podcast – if they go and listen to it, I mean, it shows, like, public speaking and, like, confidence. And yeah. so I don't think it's a bad thing to have. No, but it's, it's like someone meeting you not on your terms. Yeah. Like, and, someone has yeah. an impression of you based on what you produced. And it's not like you get to respond to it in any way. Yeah. You don't get to, like, clarify anything. No. It's just out there. And it's not like a, I'm going to sit next to them while they listen to it so I can, like, explain things. If they yeah. No. Like a random episode. It's just, like... So it is a bit nerve wracking and and also with like dating, um, especially online dating. I've had the situation occur twice <laughs> where when you were in the Tinder pool, someone knew that you did the podcast and those people are still in the Tinder pool. <laughs> and I have a picture of you. One of my pictures is like me and you. And okay. so people are like, oh, are you? on the Minute Women podcast. And I'm like, yes, wow. And they're like, oh, yeah, like, I matched with Grace, like, a year and a half ago. And I was like... <laughs> it didn't work mm. out. But I'm like, oh, <laughs> okay. That's so weird. Yeah, it's happened I, yeah. twice. Oh, gosh. It is funny because, like, Eric and I met on Tinder, and the first thing we ever talked about was the Minute Women podcast. Like... So, me. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, <laughs> yeah. Like, the first thing Eric ever... Like, Eric reached out to me first, and the first thing he ever said to me was... um so do you get a lot of lame guys pitching podcasts to you? Yeah. And I was like, yes, yeah. I do. It I get happens. a lot of guys who were like, cool, you have a podcast. Let me tell you what I would do if I had a podcast. I have Not a- like, what's your podcast about? Yeah. <laughs> so like, I have a really good idea for a podcast. It's like the Joe Rogan show, but it's not the Joe Rogan show. Do you want to hear about it? Literally every and podcast. I'm like, unmatch. <laughs> no thanks. It's just like, yeah, I so many times people would just be like, yeah, it's just me and my friends and we talk about music or like we get high and we just like talk oh, about stuff. No. And I'm like, that's not a podcast. <laughs> that's hanging out with your friends and recording with it. With a microphone. It is yeah, different. <laughs> it's so different. No, I think that the podcast has just really kind of taught me that don't like limit yourself to not doing something because you don't think you have the resources or like the ability yeah. to do it like we're, it's amazing what you can learn yeah by just doing we're literally recording this in your kitchen yeah. you're literally gonna edit it over there in the <laughs> living room and then it's gonna go online it's gonna be great if you have a laptop and if you have a microphone that's really the only equipment capital we've ever put in yeah we just have laptops which i would need anyways so i don't really consider that a podcast purchase yeah just do it do it if you have a podcast just do it yeah you know if you have an idea go out do it you never know if you want to just find a random friend or or not even a friend (laughs) and just be like hey you (laughs) you wanna you wanna do a podcast you want a friend for life yeah start a podcast with them yeah just anyone and then they'll have to be your friend that's pretty much it (laughs) that's how you strong arm people into being your friend (laughs) that's how it works (laughs) 
Well, thanks, Linnea, for doing this podcast with me for two years. Thanks, Breeze, for doing this podcast with me for two years. And thank you to all of you for listening for two years. Yeah. As our token of gratitude, we had a giveaway. Yeah. So you can go check out who the winner is. It will now be announced on Instagram. It sure will. So congratulations to whoever the big winner is. Yeah. For, you know, an amazing tote bag. Minute Women swag. Yep. A cute little mug. Some stickers. Yeah, you can like flex your Minute Women fandom. Congratulations. Absolutely. To our lucky winner. To our lucky winner. (laughs) Thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Minute Women podcast. Another Have You Got a Minute talking about how much Grace and I are obsessed with each other. Um, (laughs) Yeah, if you want to follow along with the podcast, check us out on Instagram, Minute Women Podcast, and on Twitter at The Minute Women. And make sure you rate and review the podcast. You can rate and review on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify for all you Android users. You can subscribe to the podcast and you'll get notified whenever a new episode comes out. We release new episodes every Wednesday, so we will see you next week. Bye. Bye. And thank you to all, like, for listening. Yeah. I'm going to say that again. Thank you to all. And thank you for all. (laughs) (laughs) Ah.